Hey everyone, welcome back to a new Blender tutorial on CG Geek. My name's Steve, and before we get started, I want to quick introduce you to a new friend of mine. Go ahead and come on out now. Don't be shy, come on. Go ahead and say, say hi to everyone. That's right guys, in this Blender tutorial, you'll be learning the entire process of how to create a 3D robot. So I hope you guys are excited to have some fun, and I think Bot52 has something he wants to show you. Oh, well I think he wants to thank MSI for sponsoring this video with their creator line of desktops. MSI's creator P100X line of desktops pack a ton of power in a slim form factor. This one features an Intel 12th gen 12 core processor with up to 5 gigahertz speed, 64 gigabytes of fast DDR5 memory, and the RTX 3070 Ti to handle all the 3D rendering and animation you can throw at it. It's got a modern high quality design with plenty of airflow on all sides of the case. This was literally the easiest experience I've ever had setting up a new computer, and this paired with MSI's beautiful full QHD 1440p rapid IPS display running at a super smooth 175 hertz refresh rate makes for an ultimate PC setup for any artist. To learn more, follow the first link in the video description below. Alright, so for starters, do we want to use the default cube? Eh, no, trash that. We're gonna go shift eight and add in a UV sphere. While in front view, hit tab to go into edit mode and rotate the sphere 90 degrees. Checking the little x-ray button here, we'll select all the vertices on the right hand side and hit X to delete them. Next, jump to your modifier tab and add in a new mirror modifier. This will save a whole lot of time. If you need to, change the axis from X over to Z and you'll be ready to go. Then grab all the vertices on the left and hit G and X to drag them out along the X axis. Here, go control R and add in a few more loop cuts to the mesh. And you can see we basically have a pill here and we're gonna make it look just a little bit more like a football maybe? By grabbing and scaling some of the vertices in the center of the mesh here. Then grab the vertex on the end of the sphere and click the little proportional editing button or hit P on your keyboard to enable proportional editing. And you can kind of flatten out this sphere a little bit by pulling it in along the x-axis. And just go ahead and round out the head shape a little bit more by scaling some of these vertices. Next for a little bit of detail on the head I'm going to add a few loop cuts towards the edge of the sphere here. In edit mode hit 3 to switch to face select and then alt right click to select a ring of vertices here and scale them down a bit. Awesome, now you can right click to shade smooth and then add in a new modifier, subdivision surface modifier. And with a little bit more tweaking, we're looking pretty good. Next, with face select still enabled in edit mode, we're gonna select all the faces on the front of the mesh as you can see here, making sure you only have the faces on the front of the mesh selected and extrude them inwards a bit for the screen of our robot. Then go around and alt right click to select the ring of vertices on the inside of that screen and hit T to bring up your toolbar and turn the mean crease all the way up to one. As you can see, we have some vertices in the center of the mesh here that you wanna select and delete. And there's our robot head, we'll add the eyes and mouth a little bit later. So now to add some cute big oversized headphones to the robot, I'm going to duplicate our head mesh so we keep all the modifiers, delete all the vertices, and then go shift A and add in a circle, change it to just 16 vertices, and rotate it 90 degrees. As you can see, I ended up with my vertices on the right now, and I just want to be even, so in object mode I rotated it 180 degrees to flip it. So I had my vertices on the left now because organization. So then just place that ring of vertices towards the edge of your robot head and extrude them out along the X axis. Extrude it out a few times and scale it down to kind of create the rounded end cap of a headphone. You can kind of make these however you want. I'm going with a very basic headphone design. Then extrude them inwards a little bit so you have a ring of vertices that you can extrude up for the cap over the top of the headphones. And then extrude them in and scale them down for the kind of the cups that go over your ears. Really simple basic modeling, but this is pretty fun. Then go ahead and hit Control R to add a loop cut to one of the outside rings. Slide this in pretty tight, add in one more loop cut, and pull this one towards the inside to add a crease. Speaking about crease, with those vertices still selected, hit T to open up a dual bar and give it a mean crease of one. Sweet, so now just repositioning some of these rings of vertices and then selecting the faces along the top of our headphones and extruding them up to start creating the connecting piece on your headphones. Extruding, scaling along the z-axis and extruding again, along with a little bit of rotating and then you just connect at the middle. You'll have to go back and tweak this a little bit by scaling some of these rings up and down, but it's really simple. Then you can hit three on your number pad to jump to side view and again kind of flare these getting skinnier by scaling them down along the y-axis. At the connecting piece on top here you'll want to select those faces and hit x to delete them to get rid of that weird sort of crease you get with the mirror modifier. Now it's onto the body of our little robot. For this place the cursor around where you want the body and go shift a and this time add in a cylinder. I'm going to scale that cylinder to be about as wide as the screen is on our robot's head just as reference and then hit right click and shade smooth as well. 
Then I'm going to grab the bottom row of vertices and extrude them out to flare it a little bit, and then add another loop cut to add a little bit of a crease at the bottom again, just for a little bit of detail and a little bit of character. You can play around with the flare of these now, moving around the vertices to kind of get the right curvature that you're looking for. This can be whatever you want, but I'm just going to kind of flare the pot slash body a little bit more to make him look a little bit chubby. All right, that was pretty easy. Time for the arms, feet, and neck. So starting with the neck, we'll add in a circle. We'll make sure the vertices are set to just 16, and we'll scale it down. I'll extrude it up along the z-axis. Control R to put one loop cut in the middle and scale this one up a little bit bigger, then jump to the modifier tab and add in the array modifier. Here I'll change the factor to a zero on X and one on Z. So we're duplicating the mesh in an upward direction. Here I can jump to edit mode, add one more loop cut and scale it down a little bit just to separate those rings a little bit more and position that as the neck piece. But now that we have this mesh set up, I'll duplicate it in object mode, pull it straight down along the Z axis because this is important because here I'll jump to edit mode pull it over to the left and then add in a new modifier and mirror this along the x-axis. Rotate it 90 degrees and then here in the array modifier we're going to give it a negative one value on the x and a zero on the z. Scale this down a little bit smaller, position it in the arm area and change the count to maybe 11 or 12. And now I can duplicate that same mesh for the hands, just delete the array modifier this time and scale it up a bit bigger to create sort of a cylinder for his hand. And then just changing the flare of these loop cuts by box selecting them and scaling them to kind of get a flare on the hand, which is sort of the shape I was going for. You can play around with this for whatever you think looks good. And then for the fingers, this was really easy and quick. I just grabbed one of the faces at the end of that cylinder, duplicated it, and then extruded it straight out. Then just by grabbing some of those faces, scaling them, and rotating the tip of them to kind of make it a little bit of a shape like a claw. In side view, you just place your cursor at the center of that cylinder, you hit the period key on your keyboard and choose rotate pivot point as the 3D cursor. Then you just shift D and hit R to rotate more claws on your robot out. And it was really easy to just kind of then position these a little bit. Then it was onto the feet. Go ahead and just duplicate the arm mesh again for this. You can delete the array modifier and then just scale it up real big. These I went with a super simple design. I store just big chubby round futuristic tires, I guess, was what I was going for. At this point, you might want to play around with the proportions until you find something that looks pretty cute. But essentially, if you're happy with the proportions now, you're pretty much done with the modeling on your 3D robot. That's right, now we're at the stage for adding materials to our character. So for starters, I like to split my window to make a space for our shader editor. And then switch to rendered view. Yes, we're using Cycles render engine. And yes, if you're wondering, it is super fast real-time performance. If you're using an RTX card like the 3070 Ti in this compact creator desktop I have here. So for starters, I like to jump to the world and open up an environment texture just so we can see our materials nice and clear. For this HDR, I'm opening up a studio backdrop that I got from HDR Haven. You can get your own with the link in the video description. So go ahead and bring up your shader editor now. And as always, we're going to be using the node Wrangler. You guys know the drill. Make sure it's enabled in the preferences, add-ons, node Wrangler. Check that off your list. Now if you select your principal shader and hit control shift T, we're going to open up a PBR material that I got from CCO Textures. Again, linked in the description. No, it doesn't mean we're lazy. We're just working less. I'm using a scratched red paint here, and you're just going to want to select every single one of the textures, not the zip file, and click Import Principled Shader. As you can see, there's our scratched paint material. You're just going to want to tab into Edit Mode, select everything, and go U Sphere Projection. That will avoid a lot of the texture stretching on our mesh and look pretty good. Here, if you want to adjust the scale of your scratches, just go to your mapping node, select all X, Y, Z coordinates by clicking and dragging, and change it to something like a 2 on the scale. So now here's a simple trick to add some customization to this material. We're going to select the principal shader and duplicate it, pulling it up a bit higher, and then with it selected, hitting Control shift t again to open up a second PBR material. This one is sort of a blank, rusty, scratched metal. So go ahead and import that, and you can see what that looks like on our mesh in Blender now. Now what we're going to do is make a little bit of room and go shift A to add in a mix shader. Dropping our paint shader in the bottom socket and our rust shader in the top socket, I'm going to go shift A and add in the ambient occlusion node. Second, you'll add in a color ramp node and then just connect the AO to the factor of the color ramp. Change the distance to something smaller like a 0.2 and then play around with the black and white values here until you get some nice ambient occlusion just on the corners and edges of your mesh. But then using that color ramp as a factor on our mix shader, you can see that we're mixing both those PBR materials together, sort of a realistic way where the edges of our mesh are sort of rusting first, and it just looks really cool and adds a little bit of extra variation to our model. Next up, we're gonna select all the faces for the screen of our robot and jump to our material editor, 
click the plus button to add in a second material, leave it as a basic white material for now, and click a sign to add white to all of the faces of the screen. For this material, we're just gonna make it a bit of a darker, maybe slightly yellow color, give it less roughness, so it's sort of a reflective screen, and then under the emission strength, give it about a 0.5, so it is sort of emitting some light that'll just look a little bit more realistic. Also, if you have some weird shading going on in the center here, just select the ring of vertices in the middle of your robot head and make sure that clipping is enabled, and pull them out until it snaps in the center. And that's a way to fix a little weird issue we had going on there. Okay, so now we're ready to add eyes and a mouth to our cute robot. So I'm just gonna grab two of the faces on the screen of our robot, shift D to duplicate them, scale them up along the X a little bit, and then add in a second material, make this one almost completely black and assign it to those two faces. You can give this less roughness as well, so they're a little bit reflective, and go ahead and position those wherever you think looks cute. Then go ahead and grab one of the faces on those robot eyes and duplicate it for the mouth, moving it towards the center so it snaps in the middle and position it for a cute little mouth here, extruding it out once or twice for a little bit more detail and moving it so it's flat along the face of your mesh. And now that we have some of these materials already put together, we can quickly add them to other parts of our robot. For example, we'll grab the body here now and just select the paint material that we already created to assign it to the body. Here we want to tap into edit mode, select everything and choose cylinder projection to unwrap that in a nice sort of way. Go ahead and grab the arms, tab into edit mode, select everything, hit U, cylinder projection again, then jump to the material editor and add it to the hands as well. Now for the arms, I want sort of a rubber material. So go ahead and select those now, add in a new material, select your principal shader, control shift T again. And this is a rubber material from textures.com. Just select all of them, import that PBR material. Also at this point, I decided that extruding and scaling the end of that cylinder a little bit made it a smoother transition which looked just a little bit better on our robot arms then select our chunky feet go to edit mode and you unwrap severe projection for these and grab the rubber material that we just created and drop it on those feet as well slap the material on the neck cylinders of our robot as well and we're just about finished with the materials now now last but not least grab those big oversized headphones and add the rubber material to them as well I actually didn't bother unwrapping the headphones because in this case I actually found it looked better without much texture and just the shading properties from the principal Shader. Now for the headphones, make one more material, and for this one, I'm going to open up a plastic PBR shader that I downloaded. This one's shinier, and I felt mixed well with the black rubber. So just hold Alt and right-click one of the rings of vertices on the inside cap of your headphones. Control plus to select everything that you want to be plastic and shiny, and then assign this new PBR plastic material to that. That's looking pretty good, but there is one more mesh that we haven't added yet. That is a cylinder at the top of the head for, you guessed it, a little antenna to make sure that everyone knows that this is a robot. So scale it up along the Z, sort of rotate it, put a few loop cuts in and add a little antenna head at the end of it. Slap that shiny plastic black material that we just created on it. In the render settings under film, you can choose transparent to kind of hide that HDR so you can get a better view of your finished robot. Also under color management, change it to medium high or high contrast to see those materials pop a little bit more. Now the reason I'm leaving the arms straight out is because if you're going to go on to character animation, it's really easy to rig them this way. But if you want to pose your robot without rigging him, you can go ahead and use proportional editing to quickly move around the cylinders after applying the array modifier, of course, and sort of hang his arms and hands down along his side so he looks at a little bit more relaxed in his posing. But that'll do it for our robot creation tutorial in Blender. I hope you guys had some fun. And if you'd like to download my finished robot model here, you can do so over on Patreon and get access to all the finished tutorial files on the channel. Plus, it's really a great way to support CG Geek if you want more tutorials like this in the future. And that wraps up the last part of this Blender tutorial on how to create a 3D robot. If you're interested in a plug and play, ready to go, super powerful, slim desktop that's gonna get you started and be able to do really anything in Blender that you want, check out MSI's desktops with the link in the video description. If you wanna see more, click that subscribe button and ring the bell to see a new video coming very shortly. We'll see you guys there. Keep on blending. Peace.